place is nuts. Looked like skin grenades, but they were balls. I almost puked looking at them. Hey, I'm UFC President Dana White, and we're always looking for up-and-coming talent to sign. Back in the day, I used to scout the world looking for new talent, but I haven't done that in years. Now, I'm back on the road, I'm looking for fighters, and I'm bringing two of my favorite people with me. Matt Serra won the Ultimate Fighter, and he also became the welterweight champion of the world. He now trains some of the best fighters in the sport out of his gym in Long Island, New York. Dean Thomas is a former UFC fighter and was on the Ultimate Fighter season four with Matt Serra. He's beat some of the best guys in the sport. Serra, Guida, Pulver, and he's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And he's a lot of fun to hang out with. We're checking out the best restaurants, the coolest places to hang out, having fun, and then going to see some fights. I'm looking for the next Ronda Rousey, the next Robbie Lawler, the next Conor McGregor. I'm looking for future champions. And I'm willing to go to any show, anywhere in the world to find them. This episode, we're heading to Denver, Colorado. We're going to make Rocky Mountain oysters, which are actually fried bull testicles. Then we're going to learn how to make ice cream from scratch. And finally, we're checking out a Fury FC car. The sheep balls. What are we doing with that? Sheep balls. Yeah, it's uh, bull balls. It's bull balls. Bull balls. But it's called oysters up there. Yeah, they call them uh, Rocky Mountain oysters. So you're going to eat them? Yeah. Are you having some? No. Not, no. <laughs> well, listen, I'm going to see what it looks like. I'm, yeah, there's no way you're going to do it. What? what? I don't eat seafood. You don't eat anything. <laughs> I know, you don't eat You eat nothing. You eat pizza, that's it. I do. What if they're gluten-free balls? <laughs> maybe, maybe, I'm going to if they're gluten-free. <laughs> we'll get a pair of those. So we went inside the Buckhorn Exchange, and when you walk in, they have taxidermy all over the place. You feel like there's a lot of eyes on you. You got a ton of heads on the walls of every animal you can think of. I've heard of Rocky Mountain oysters going in I didn't know what to expect. Hello. How are you? Good, nice. Welcome to the Buckhorn. Are, aren't you guys known for a certain delicacy? We are known to, uh, yeah, we have a... Uh... We heard this place is nuts. If you, know what I, if you know what I'm talking about. I'm sorry to cut to the chase. You guys ready for me? Yeah, All right, come, come into my office. All right, Dean, it's your time to shine. It's your day today. The guy takes us back into the kitchen. Oh, are we preparing the balls? I'll play with them and you eat them. He pulls out this, this thing full of the Rocky Mountain oysters. And they're this big, covered in veins, and cut down the middle. Oh, my you, you, God. <laughs> you oh, get, my God. You want to get gloved up? Let me see. Oh, no! You want me to do it? Oh. <laughs> I'm serious. I don't even know if I can fucking do this. It was so fucking gross that I literally started gagging and thought I was going to throw up. Looked like skin grenades, but they were balls. It was like veiny. It was like it was like thick and veiny. I couldn't even I couldn't even stay in there while they did it. I puke, man. I almost puked looking at him. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm out. I can't do it. I had to leave the kitchen. I'll fucking throw up. I feel like I'm going to throw up. I didn't know what to expect. I can tell you this. I didn't expect it to be as disgusting and as gross as it was. I'm not. I'm sweating and shit. I'm not good with the, that stuff, man. I swear to God, I'm sweating my ass off right now. That is one of the grossest fucking things that I've ever seen. Rocky Mountain oysters is just the PC term for bull's nuts. And that's what we had to do. You know what I'm saying? When in Rome, do like the Romans. All right. We have a real oh, man. special.
Chris in here? Yo, bulls have huge balls. Like everything else on this show, I gotta step up and do all the dirty work. I'll tell you, Dean Thomas really is up for anything. Oh my God, this is like Fear Factor. I can't even look at him. I can't even think about him. I'm trying, I'm trying to get the image out of my head right now. I watched Dean prepare it. Right here's good. Anywhere you want. Be careful with your cup. I feel like a parent with this guy. So he started unwrapping it. This is hard. Wrapped the membrane. Yeah, it is hard. Come on, man. It felt like it was pulling the skin off a mango. Like pulling the skin off a bull's nuts was like. Get that membrane, you kid in there. You get to you. I'm trying. You get it, you squeeze it, and you rip that membrane. There we go. Oh, God damn. It was tough, it was very difficult to do. But again, I ain't no punk. So then we start to slice it? And then we slice it, yes sir. And then he started chopping it up. We have a nice right, pile of bowls here. Dean's in there preparing right now. If he fucking eats this, I'm gonna double his salary. He is the fucking, <laughs> he is the king of this fucking show. Bread this motherfucker and then fry it up. Just grab a big handful, just put it right there. There you are, okay. It don't look as bad now. Now it could be any kind of cutlet. Nice, shaky, shaky, shaky. Nice, I like the way you talk to it too. They taught me how to handle, prepare, cut, slice, and fry up some bull's nuts. Oh, look at them, huh? You not gonna eat them? Oh, absolutely not. How he could go back there, see those, prep them, and cook them, and then actually eat them is one of the most gangster things that I've ever seen. Get in there, big boy. It's your moment. It's your moment. There you go. There you go. Take your time. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Ah, no eye contact. You're the king. Let You're the see. king, Dean Thomas. That thing? That's kind of good, though. Kind of good! It's look at him! Oh, he's doing... He, I think he likes it! I think he likes it! I obviously am not a fan of Rocky Mountain oysters, but the rest of the food there was incredible. Eating bull's nuts ain't that bad to me, especially when you fry it up, you put some condiments on it. Like, they lucky I ain't have no barbecue sauce. I'd probably still be sitting there right now eating it, but... It wasn't that bad to me. It was actually kind of good. You just It tastes like, like fried up rubber bands. Let me tell you what. Dean Thomas is the king of this show. He's the king. Well, coming off just seeing the Rocky Mountain oysters, I was thrilled to go and make some ice cream. I can tell you that. It's going to be better than old testicles. I hope so. We went to Little Man's Ice Cream Place. I mean, it really had the vibe of Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. I mean, it was like bells and whistles and everybody in uniforms and, you know, flipping ice cream and candy and little people running around. Yeah. Call me no Oompa Loompa, I, I'll tackle you right here. They had a slide there. Wanna go down it? Ollie Ollie Oxen Free! I love ice cream! Oh shit, let's go fast. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> How much ice cream do you guys serve here a day? In the summer, um, for production side, we produce about 5,000 gallons of ice cream every single week. Very cool. Yeah. All right, show us how cool. it's done. Let's do it. So then the lady showed us how they make the big buckets of ice cream. So you fill the ice cream bucket halfway full, and then you put in Oreos or whatever it is that you're putting in. Then you stir it. The lady who's taking us around and showing us how to do it was stirring it like it was nothing. I know that's way harder than you're making it look. This girl was just The girl made it look really easy. The way she's reaching in there and stirring it over. Dana, with his Popeye forearms, was in there. And I'm telling you, it's like the guy with ran a mile. She made that look real easy. Real easy. And Dana was in there struggling with it. He was, veins was popping out of his head and getting all turning red and shit. I was gonna call somebody in to check his pulse between me, you, and the wall. <laughs> I mean, he, was, he was getting tired. 
obviously, like anything else, you know, there's a technique to it. And let me tell you what, she's got it down. Perfect. Yay! Good job. Then Matt tried to make a waffle cone, which seems like it would be very easy. Ooh, la -dee -dee. La -dee -da. Okay. Perfect. Now get a whole scoop. Okay. Look at this. Oh, that's dead center. Perfect. But dead center. when you're dealing with Matt Sarah, he finds a way to make everything sloppy as he possibly can. Slowly pull it down. Slowly I turn. Step by step. Okay. I'm gonna get it squished out a little, then lock it in. Perfect. Okay. You made a big one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and the lady's like, all right, scrape the sides off to get the excess waffle out, and he's all making a mess of this. He didn't even know how to put it in the bowl. I mean, it was classic Matt Sarah. I'm liking it. Oh, look at this. Look at that beauty. Look away! <laughs> wow! It was delicious. Just fold it up and... Oh, man! Oh, it's so good! And what does he do when he, soon as he makes it? He bites the bottom out and then starts and turns it into a blowhorn. Dean Thomas sucks. Dean Thomas sucks at your age. Thank you. I'm sorry you had to witness this. <laughs> <laughs> so on this show, we do a lot of cool things. <laughs> Here's Johnny! All right, guys, we did it! I'm Dana White. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. This was one of the coolest things that we've done. So I had meetings in Denver that I had to go to, and the boys were hooking up with Sam Martin, and he's the punter for the Denver Broncos. They're going to have some fun uh, with the Broncos. Welcome to Mile High. So do you guys have an advantage being a mile up, like, in terms of altitude? Because I know I've been here a couple of days, and it's been affecting me. So, like, when people come play here... I say yes. Now, this is my second year here, and I still lose my breath going up the stairs. Yeah. So I think the longer you play here, the more acclimated you get. So you get away teams coming in here, and I think it definitely, it definitely plays a toll on them. Yeah. So what do we got going on? All right, on? so we're going to punt some balls. Let's do it. Let me explain something to people. I hate sports. Well, I'm just taking, like, two steps, and I'm dropping it and kicking it. However you want to. Matt's like not that. a big sports guy, and I knew that going in. He doesn't like other sports. You know, Matt likes his like what he likes. Matt's got two bad knees. Matt can barely even walk, let alone run around and try to catch a punt. I don't watch football, but I always wanted to play football. So this was an absolute great experience for me. Ooh. You got it, Dean. So I'll tell you, Dean Thomas at the Mile High Stadium, he, he was like a kid in a candy store. He loved it. Yeah, run it. I'm right on your ass. I was really interested. I wanted to go do that. So I FaceTimed those guys to see how it was going. Yeah, I'll hit him, I'll hit him a couple knuckleballs here in a minute. I actually had to put up a 1000 bucks for Dean to catch and return a punt. And I heard him. He said he'd give me $1,000 if I caught a punt. Oh, my God, 500 bucks if he catches a punt. 1,000 bucks, man. And that's motivation right there for me to really get my Devin Hester on. I went out there and I caught that punt and I want my money, Dana. In fact, I want my money in untraceable bills. Ones and fives, Dana. I want my money fast in cash, boy. Where are we going, by the way? You're going to the cave. 
We're going to a cave? We're going to a cave. Oh, I guess Dana's making that one. <laughs> hey, Owlhead, huh? You making the ice cream? Ah, let me see the list of activities. Oh, this guy's gonna be fucking gulping down cow balls. Oh, they're gonna have some nice fresh made Denver ice cream. Okay, I think I'll fit that into my schedule. So myself and Mr. Thomas, we went to a place called Cave of the Winds, and we went on this thing called the Pterodactyl. Hey, Matt. Don't you fuck it. Don't you say it. I'm just don't saying. Don't you I say just, it. I just want to make sure. Don't you say it, Deep. I could ride it. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How are you? Good. How are you? Hey I'm Matt. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Matt. What's Jim up, Conrad. Yes. What is this? What are we looking at? So this is our pterodactyl ride. This is our big thrill-seeking uh, pendulum swing drop ride here. So standing right here, we are roughly about 7,000 feet above sea level. Sitting about 30 feet off the edge of a cliff, 200 feet up off the ground. So you sit down in a two-person chair, it's kind of got <laughs> bucket seats, you get a uh -huh. three-point harness. So after we open up the floor, we're gonna tip you forward 90 degrees, you're looking straight down at that drop, we'll let you go, 150 feet of free fall, you're gonna swing forward 90 to 100 miles an hour through our canyon. Okay. Um, any questions with anything? Let's just get this over with. All right, let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> now these guys know that I do not like heights. I do not like speeds. That's why they are trying to kill me. So they put me on that pterodactyl at the Cave of the Winds. So what happens first is you're sitting in the chair and then they strap you in. <gasps> over the waist. And you feel secure at this moment because you feel tight. All right, listen. If you're gonna be a bear, Dean Thomas. Be a, a big bear. Be a grizzly! Let's go, let's go. <laughs> this pterodactyl thing, it, it felt like something out of Game of Thrones. Like it's from the veil, the veil. You open up the, 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 uh, the window, I think they called it, in the floor. I'm messing this up, but the point is, it was trippy. Hey, hold on, you're cheating by keeping your hood over your eyes. I'm only kidding, do what you wanna do, feel comfortable. Then when they tilt you forward, there's a little slack in the uh, seat belts and the braces, and your body comes off the back of the chair and you are pressed up against the seat belt, so you, you feel like you're gonna fall out. That is probably the scariest moment, and that was the reason why I said, you know what? That hoodie was, oh, I didn't even see his eyes at all. Don't, what do they say? They say, don't look down. We but you, have no we choice. literally, we literally cannot oh look God. up. I know, look at this. Ugh. Holy fucking God! That was like, it was like the most intense type of roller coaster drop I've ever felt. Holy fucking God! That was definitely one of the scariest things I've done on the show. We had the heights, the speed, and then we had loud ass Matt Sarah next to me. God! Hold on, let's oh. do it again. Oh. Holy oh. shit, that was fun. Oh. <laughs> that was orgasmic. That, well, I don't, I, I wouldn't use a different word. I think I shit, uh, I think I shit myself. You might, one time I wish I didn't go commando. No, I'm, I'm good. Okay, you know what's funny, man? I told my wife, I told my wife, I'm not doing anything dangerous. Hey, don't worry, fucking holy shit. Welcome into Denver, Colorado, the historic National Western Complex. We are here for Fury Fighting 53. Do this shit. Yeah, man. Yeah. Ugly man Joe Holmes. He was looking to make a statement here, and he told me that he really wanted to shine for Dana because he was on a contender series. He won his fight, but he didn't get signed. Joe Holmes had a win on the contender series. Obviously looked impressive because he won by finish. We wanted to see him on looking for a fight. That was a good spinning kick right in there. First round, gets kicked in the nuts. Just to get hit with that spinning nut shot was brutal for anybody 
to have to endure. I don't know if you recover. How do you recover from that spinning fucking heel know. kick to the dick? He went down, was able to recover, able to regroup. recover from that and then once he did he came back and uh, ended up winning the fight by knockout that makes him seven and one now and that was a clean ass knockout right there declaring your winner by knockout ugly man Jones. I, I, I didn't get to see him out before the kick to the nuts the show, but do you think he's ready yeah seriously he's, he's good man he's a tough he's a tough kid he's, he's young He's young, he can hang there, man. So in your honest, unbiased opinion, He's there, bro. should I sign him tonight, or should he, he get a couple more fights and do the next season of fucking Contender? Uh, he went to Contender. I know, I know. He's, he's ready for it, bro. Listen, I'm telling you, though, he's ready. Hey, I would tell you. I know, I know, that's why I asked. The Nelk Boys are, are in town right now. The, 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 the Nelk Boys. So the Nelk Boys are YouTubers, and, uh, you know, I became friends with them a couple years ago. I wasn't expecting like a lot of You know, they had just wrapped up shooting what they were shooting, and they came by to watch the fight. Now, the main event was between Trey Ogden and J.J. Akanovich. This was a fight that I was really looking forward to see because at the weigh-ins, they had words. It looked like these two guys really didn't like each other. And not only did they not like each other, but they were really good fighters coming from really good camps. I busted ass. <laughs> I busted ass. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I know you can't hear, but you're gonna smell it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Crouch told me, he said, this is a real fight. Oh, shit. He's picking this dude apart. So Trey Ogden, obviously I heard really good things about him going in, and then he put on a, an impressive performance. I mean, that was fucking as clean as it gets. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Now, J.J. was no punk. Let's not get this twisted. J.J. had game. He was on his back and was still dangerous off of his back. Oh, man. That looked like that was deep and ready to roll there, boy. Besides one slick arm lock attempt by J.J., it was all Trey. saw a difference in desire and will to win. Trey Ogden went out there and put his jab and his counter left hook on JJ, and JJ really didn't have a lot of answers for it. There you go. Let's see what he does here. Man, that guy's in a horrible position. This guy literally has the full mount on him right now and isn't doing a fucking thing. What's the worst thing that happens? This guy gets up, you're fucking him up on your feet anyway. I know. I'll tell you, the second it looked like he was going to slow it down when he got a dominant position, he got mounted on him. It looks like he was just going to stay there. Before we could even blink, he got him in a beautiful head and arm choke and put him to sleep. Incredible on his feet. He looked unbelievable on the ground. The problem with him is he's like 30 or 31 years old. I was bitching that he wasn't fucking doing anything. He set up the submission and fucking choked him unconscious. It's like a now or never thing for this kid. And I felt like He's talented enough to get a shot, and let's see what he can do in the UFC. There he is. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Thank man. You Great so fight. I appreciate it. I was talking to your coach. 
And he was like, everybody felt like this was a real test for you, you know, that this kid was, uh, yes, this kid was super tough. You're not getting any fucking younger. That's yes, it. But, but I'm a machine, bro. I got it. Yeah, you're in great shape, man. That's for, for fucking sure. What are you, 31? 32 today. 32 today? Happy birthday. Happy fucking birthday. You're in the UFC, Thank brother. You so much. Can I touch you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What else could you ask for? He's very well-rounded, striking looks sick, submission win, another great addition to the UFC. I'm excited for this. Let's see what this kid can do. All right, Holmes, get over here. <laughs> Joe Holmes, he fought a tough guy, and he went in and finished again. So I absolutely am giving him a shot in the UFC. Came in, you fucking finished tonight after a Unfucking believable kick to the nuts. <laughs> Unbelievable. The worst of all time. Spinning heel kick to the fucking nuts. Yeah. You got back up and you finished him, man. Welcome to the UFC. <laughs> all right? Welcome, yeah, what was cool is both Ogden and Holmes are trained by James Kraus. Uh, he's a UFC fighter and awesome coach. That guy is, uh, is pumping some real talent out of his gym. I was happy to see, you know, that he got two guys in that night. Look away! Denver was perfect, man. The weather was great while we were there. The fights were awesome. Never been to Denver, Colorado. Great hotels, lots of stuff to do, great restaurants. Stay away from the Rocky Mountain oysters, though.